All right, ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Devin Nunes, is now preparing to send eight criminal referrals to the Attorney General, William Barr, over the alleged misconduct during the Trump-Russia investigation. Also, just breaking now, Devin Nunes has filed a $150 million lawsuit against McClatchy News and alleging conspiracy to derail the Clinton-Russia probes. Congressman joins us now at the very latest. Let's start with your lawsuit. Wasn't this the same McClatchy that said that Michael Cohn was in Prague? When Michael, well, I knew where Michael Cohn was. His son is a great athlete. His son, he was in Los Angeles with his son. Uh, well, let's just say showing off his son's great talent. Ex yeah, he they, never was in Prague. And they doubled down on stupid. But that's only yeah, one they did example. that twice, Sean. So they had dozens and dozens of stories. So a couple of the reporters there were the biggest uh, perpetuators of the Russia hoax. Uh, and don't forget, they also targeted the National Rifle Association. They targeted a lawyer, uh, Cleta Mitchell. So all of this was done uh, in concert while they were slandering and attacking me and defaming me, attacking Republicans. And the whole time they were getting this information from someone. And so part of the lawsuit here is not only that you know, they need to retract everything that they did against me, but they also need to come clean with the American people, retract all of their fake news stories. And so this is part of the broader cleanup. So remember a few weeks ago, I, I filed against Twitter that they're, they're censoring conservatives. Uh, McClatchy is one of the biggest, uh, the worst offenders of this, but we're coming after the rest of them. I think people are just beginning to wake up now that I'm serious, I'm coming to clean up all of the mess. So if you're out there and you lied and you defamed, uh, we're going to come after you. Well, I would add to the list, you know, the cowardly shift. You know, I've offered him an hour on the show and I have a well, dossier on shift. I can't, I can't sue. I can't sue him. Uh, but I have, uh, I have but him I, in his I own words documented. I offered him three hours on radio and one hour here. I don't, know why. I don't know why he doesn't take it up, but, but he doesn't want to tell I guess he's afraid. Uh, I got a tape of him colluding with a Russian, or somebody That's believed right. to be a Russian, that had compromising materials and naked pictures of Trump, and, you know, he was hyperventilating on the phone call, didn't know he was being, it was a hoax. Um, and don't forget, even after that, the staff, the Democratic staff followed up. So the media ignored, that's another thing that they ignored. So there's two things that, that happened in this, right? You had fake news stories that were very slanderous that have got to be wiped away and cleaned off the internet. And at the same time, you had that they would take these stories and ignore them, like the fact that you had staffers here that were attempting to collude with Russians, Democratic staffers colluding with Russians, trying to get information on Donald Trump. I mean, that really happened, and it's went you know, largely unreported, except by well, uh, you know, Devin, very few in the conservative media. And we also had the Hillary bought and paid for dossier. Real right, Russian collusion paid for to influence the election. Now we've got, the, we've got evidence. Ukraine, the Ukrainian officials on them with evidence and a tape. Joe Biden bragging they fired him. Uh, I don't have a lot of time. I want to get to the criminal referral issue. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you begin with eight, but there might be more. What can you tell us and how soon? Yeah, so the, simply put, there's five that are straightforward. So five on lying, leaking, obstructing Congress. Those are five, five specific names. There are three. One is a global leak uh, uh, referral. So remember, there's been, I mean, everybody knows about general, the leak between General Flynn and the Russian ambassador. We don't know that that's ever been investigated, but there's about a dozen others. So we're referring all those to make sure that they get the proper sunlight put on them and transparency so that they can be followed up on. The other two, I think, are more difficult that, that are involve conspiracy. Uh, I think there were a bunch of people who wanted to be the next Watergate deep throat within the FBI and DOJ, and they were leaking, and they were proud to do it, and they were all conspiring together, and that's what we're asking the DOJ to look into. If we don't hold them accountable for this abuse of power, this corruption at the highest levels to, uh, to first influence and help one candidate over another and then and then literally upend the election of the American people. It will happen again and again. We'll lose the republic. Holding them accountable is key. Thank you, Congressman. Attorney General William Barr is set to testify on Capitol Hill tomorrow and Wednesday as the Justice Department looks to complete its review of the Mueller report in the coming days. Meanwhile, President Trump continues to lash out at the Mueller investigation, tweeting this. The reason the whole process seems so politicized is that Democrats made up the complete lie about collusion, and none of it happened. Charles Hurt. So he was retweeting 
Charles Hurt on that, Charlie Hurt. Uh, the Russian hoax never happened. It was a fraud on the American people. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler disagrees with that. There may very well not have been uh, evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, which mm -hmm. is a very high judicial standard, uh, of criminal conspiracy with the Russians. But there was, in plain sight, open collusion with the Russians. I want to bring in now Alabama Congressman Robert Adderholt, ranking member of the Appropriations Subcommittee that oversees funding for the Justice Department and will question the Attorney General tomorrow. Good to see you. Welcome to the program. Thanks for being with me. Uh, Thanks. So it's a House led by Democrats. What can we expect at this hearing tomorrow or testimony tomorrow? Well, of course, our committee tomorrow is about the appropriations process. Uh, we are in, responsible for the funding of the Department of Justice. They have submitted a budget of around $30 billion for FY 2020, and that's what this hearing is supposed to be about. But uh, unfortunately, because now the uh, Democrats are in control of the House and, of course, in control of the committees, uh, you know, there is a fear that this will turn into something about uh, the uh, Mueller report. And uh, and we want to really focus on what the issue at hand is. Now, Chairman Serrano of New York is the uh -huh. uh, chairman of the committee, and uh, he has always been very straightforward. So I'm hoping that he will keep this on track and make sure that that's exactly what we look at is the budget for next year's for the Department of Justice. And like I said, it's 30 30 billion dollars. You know, it's so interesting. And you speak to that, that kind of slip to the next message that the American public is so angry with Congress about. You know, I mean, you, you want to talk about 30 billion dollars of American taxpayer money for the fiscal year 2020. But you already are conceding that this easily could slide into the next topic having to do with the Mueller report. Here's acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney on it. Democrats really were caught flat-footed. They really did believe that, uh, that uh, Mueller would find collusion and find obstruction. The Democrat Party is infested with what we call Trump derangement syndrome. They still cannot accept the fact that he won the election, and they'll do anything they can to try and either undo that or prevent that from happening again. Congressman Adderholt, if this, as anticipated, goes a bit sideways and becomes a battle about the Mueller report, what will you as Republicans do in the room? Well, my uh, focus will be, again, we'll try to be on just what the, the budget is, but at the same time, the uh, bar has said that he will release his report within the next couple of weeks, I think mid-April, and here we are already uh, well, into the, uh, well into April. So it'll only be a few more days before that report comes out. So the Judiciary Committee has taken this up, uh, and the Judiciary Committee is really a committee that would, would discuss, but be more focused on this. But preparation is more about the budget, or exactly that's what it is about, is the budget. And so uh, that's what the hearing tomorrow has been dedicated to. We sure. have a couple hours with the Attorney General, and and it's important that we know how that we can best fund the Department of Justice to make sure they're doing their mission and they're having the resources to, to do it. You know, I always have a question about how things really are. And when you hear the acting White House Chief of Staff, Mick Mulvaney, talk about the politics of this, do you see it that way? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, this, as you know, this goes back to... Uh, over the last two years that uh, the Democrats cannot figure out how Donald Trump won. Uh, we know that he won because he has a message that resonated with the American people. And uh, the Democrats are still are now trying to say there was some kind of collusion, collusion with Russia. And that simply was not the case. And, I, and the report bears that out. So, uh, you know, this is they keep dragging this out on and on and trying to make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. It's nothing was there. And like I said, there, there'll be time to look at that report, but tomorrow we're going to focus on the appropriations process, the $30 billion request to the Department of Justice, which is a lot of money. And we want to make sure that that uh, funding is going to the right places and making sure that it is well used within the Department of Justice. I, I already know that 420 of you in the House voted for releasing the Mueller report per rules and regs, which William Barr has said he would do even at his confirmation hearing. So I'm not even going to ask that because everybody's on the record saying release it. What I do want to know, though, going forward, you talk about beating Donald Trump uh, for the presidency and that this might be, for a second term, this might be part of the game, if you will, for Democrats. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I'm just trying to quickly say it. I want to give you a last comment on that. No, absolutely. This is all about trying to tear down uh, President Trump. He has done a great job over the last two years, 
Uh, he is, we have a great economy. He is doing every, he's increased manufacturing in this country and continues to do so. And uh, I think he's going to be reelected. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people who don't want to see him in a second term in the White House, and they're doing everything they can to tear him down. Uh, Congressman Robert Adderholt from the great state of Alabama. Again, welcome to Outnumbered Overtime. Thank you. Thank you.